今朝小学校で女の子を見かけてな遠目にも可愛らしい感じで。I just finished Fate Prisma Ilya, Fowl in the Snow, which is an interesting name for an anime considering there's basically no Ilya. As always, it's up to me to change the name of this anime to something a bit more realistic. I'm quitting heroing, rising of the sister hero, and finally, my adopted father's adopted daughter is my biological sister. If you were more surprised that this anime was good than you were when they announced season 2 of No Game No Life, heh. <laughs> Look at you getting your hopes up. There will never be a second season. Then be sure to subscribe to my channel and join my Discord. Let me give you a satire synopsis of this anime, which does contain spoilers. This is the prequel to the Prisma Ilya series, which tells the story of Shiro? Didn't see that coming. In this universe, there's a clan that has children that can grant any wish unconditionally until around the age of six, known as a child of God. So you already know that Kuritsugu is gonna go abduct one of those children with. Shiro? I swear, Shiro's parents can't catch a break no matter what universe they're in. They always die. An explosion! Shiro, run away! Um, did nobody notice the red haired child run past the barrier? Guess that's what minimum wage does to a man. Shiro proceeds to save Miyu. <laughs> wow, you have so much in common with Shiro because, just like her, Shiro's father. Never hugged him. All right, Kuritsugu, you have the great wish granting child. What are you gonna do with her? Oh no, Kuritsugu died. Too bad he didn't wish to not have a disease. Before Kuritsugu died, he told Shiro to continue the family business, keeping her around as a tool to find a way to use her to save the world. Well, now that he's dead, we can just forget the wishes of that old man. After some bonding between Shiro and Miyu, who are now known as the two time back to back orphans, she says to him, Shiro san to. See? You don't see it. Right there! She activates her wishing power! She made a wish for him to become her real brother, essentially brainwashing him into protecting her. So, for everybody asking, why can't Shiro always be like this? Well, because he didn't get put into an infinite Tsukuyomi, where he now wants to help her live a normal life. To be fair, this probably would have happened even if she didn't wish for it. Shiro, being a new man, decides to take her on a nice trip to see her family's graves, which is the best place to tell her, hey, just letting you know, you may, or may not, have been just seen as a tool for us. Sure would be a perfect time to be kidnapped, right after being told this. Julian, who is Shiro's friend, tries to abduct Miyu. Shiro, get him! Ooh, different universe, still same Shiro. I guess they're gonna finish him off now. Ah. That's just lazy writing. Classic movie villain. He's saved by my favorite ramen chef, Kirei, who explains the goal of Julian. The goal of Julian is... Is it salvation for humanity? It's salvation for... Wait, how did you know that? I read the light novel. The end of the world is coming soon, so he wants to sacrifice Miyu to replace the Holy Grail and make it so humanity survives. After this, Shiro goes to his villain arc until Sakura shows up. She tries to give her servant card Gilgamesh to Shiro. Just when I thought this anime was great, a wild Shinji appears. He then transforms, but Sakura is ready to transform and fight back. Don't feel bad, Sakura. Performance issues are common. She was given a nameless card by the Einsworth, since they expected her to betray them. Come on, Shinji, at least wait till I'm finished talking to kill Sakura. How can Shiro possibly beat him now? Do not be foolish, Shinji. Unlike Sakura, I believe in the heart of the cards. Shiro uses the heart of the cards to become the heroic spirit of himself. He kills Shinji, then proceeds to speedrun the rest of the Holy Grail War. Finally, he runs into Julian, who tells him that sacrificing one life could save the world. Shiro replies, saying that her family has had the power for generations, and only have ever wished that their children had happy lives, hiding them for the first six years of their lives until their power goes away. I don't mean to be that guy, but why didn't they just wish for the power to go away, so that they could live regular lives? After that, Shiro just walks past him. Makes sense to me. Finally reuniting with Miyu, he makes a wish to send her to a place that she won't suffer anymore. Clearly this wish didn't work, because she got sent to this hellhole. Now Shiro must hold off Angelica while Miyu is taking her time to teleport out. This is basically how the fight goes. I have more swords than you. Nuh-uh, and my swords are bigger. Nuh-uh, mine is bigger. Well, do you have this? Well, crap. He bought enough time, so in the end... Kataya. It's enough to make a grown man cry. What a great prequel. I should probably check out the anime that comes next.
Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Now, let's talk about the characters in this anime, starting off with the greatest Shiro in the history of Shiro kind. While in Ilya's universe, we get this terrible Shiro who runs into Lolly and says, Hard to believe she's already 18. On the other hand, in Miyu's universe, he's a more broken character who abandons those garbage ideals he got from Kuritsugu and lives his own life protecting his now biological sister over everything else. Shiro even recognizes that he's probably in the wrong, but doesn't care. It only took three fate timelines and multiple spin-offs to find the best Shiro. Step bro tier. He said the thing! Miyu, the only person who can do family conversion surgery. Gonna be honest, about 90% of this anime, she was on house arrest, and the rest, she was being kidnapped. So, not a lot of screen time. I am glad that we get a backstory for this character. You now notice so many different things from the TV show after watching this. Maybe I should go back and rewatch it. Heh, <laughs> no. I have enough police investigations going on for watching it just once. All I have to say is that somebody better take her to see the beach. Here. Julian is what Shiro would have been if he decided to follow Kurutsugu's path using Miyu as a tool for world peace. He's attempting to save the world by sacrificing one person and can even be seen as the hero of the story. Almost like Thanos. A small price, price to, to pay, pay for, for salvation. salvation. Here. Hi senpai! Stranger danger! Oh, it's just my stalker. Let's see what Sakura is like in this anime. Senpai no sake Different anime, same stuff. Many people have always wondered, what would happen if all the Zokins died five years earlier? Well then, Sakura would still be obsessed with Shiro, but this time, honest? That shouldn't be possible. Speaks her mind here. Just when I thought Shinji couldn't get any worse, he goes even, even further, further beyond. Korea. Shinji has brain rot, which makes him not fully able to remember who he is. Which is an ability that I wished I had so that I could forget him. Even if it was just a doll, I'm glad that they put him down because the only good Shinji is a dead Shinji. Familicide tier. Finally, the greatest characters in the Fate universe make an appearance. It's Neko Ark and Holy Grail Kun. Crossover. Over tier. Hey, what are you doing? Time for final thoughts and rating the anime. To me, the characters in this singular movie were somehow better than almost all of the regular versions. I like this Shiro more than almost all of the other timelines, besides today's menu, of course. I prefer this Sakura over the Heaven's Field Path. I even like Niyu here more than the main story. The plot was probably the most comprehensible of the Fate movies, only needing one film to explain everything. They also removed almost all of the fan service from the original, which I'm glad they did. Having fan service in an anime with a more serious tone would have just ruined it. It also follows a very similar plotline to Fate Zero, with a darker story that creates a battle of ideologies between two groups. It also did a bit of a reversal. You can consider the actions of Shiro to be morally wrong, since it is the option that favors the few. There were also scenes that mirrored the other fates, which I thought was a great addition. The animation is definitely the weakest part of the film. While it's not bad by any means, it's definitely nowhere near the animation of any of the other fates. The soundtracks were great, specifically in the final fight when Shiro's soundtrack was playing. Even though I've heard it over a million times, it never gets old. While my anime list gave this anime a score of around 7.9 out of 10, I will be giving a score of 8.4 main characters who didn't show up out of 10. In conclusion, this movie was... Hello, Outro Lunar here. Click here if you want to see my channel. Click over here if you want to see my most recent video. Click over here if you want to see the recommended video. Alright, bye.